In this video, we will discuss Picus syndrome, posterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome or the lateral medullary syndrome with the Ica syndrome, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome or the lateral pontine syndrome. We will discuss their clinical features and the structures involved in the two syndromes. What's the cause of lateral pontine syndrome? Atherosclerotic, thrombotic or embolic occlusion of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. What's the origin of anterior inferior cerebellar artery? It arises from the basilar artery. The Pico syndrome, Wellenberg syndrome or lateral medullary syndrome is the most common cause of brain stem stroke. What's the cause of Pico syndrome? It's the atherosclerotic thrombotic or embolic occlusion of the vertebral artery or posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Most cases are due to occlusion of the vertebral artery artery. Some are due to pica occlusion. Only the fourth segment of the vertebral artery gives branches to the brain stem and cerebellum. What's the origin of vertebral artery? On the right side, it arises from the innominate artery and on the left side, it arises from the subclavian artery. It passes through the foramina of the upper six cervical vertebrae, passes through the foramen magnum to enter into the cranial cavity and unite with the other vertebral artery to form the basilar artery. So posterior inferior cerebellar artery is a branch of vertebral artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery is a branch of the basilar artery. Which part of medulla and cerebellum does the posterior inferior cerebellar cerebellar artery supplies. It supplies the lateral part of the medulla and inferior surface of the cerebellum. Which vertebral artery segment occlusion causes pica syndrome? Occlusion of the intracranial or V4 or the last segment of the vertebral artery or posterior inferior cerebellar artery causes Wellenberg syndrome. Only the fourth segment of the vertebral artery supply branches to the brain stem and cerebellum. So where is the lesion in anterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome? The lesion is in the lateral and inferior pons and middle cerebellar peduncle and the cerebellum. This is the middle cerebellar peduncle here and here is the lesion. I colored it. So what are the structures affected by an ICA or the lateral pontine syndrome? One brain structure cerebellum and the middle cerebellar peduncle. Two track, one descending and the one ascending track. One descending sympathetic track and one ascending spinothalamic tract and four cranial nerves that arise from the pond trigeminal abdicent facial and the vestibulocochlear nerve so what are the structures affected by posterior inferior cerebellar artery syndrome the one structure in the brain cerebellum inferior surface of the cerebellum and inferior cerebellar peduncle two tracts spinothalamic tract and the descending sympathetic tract shown in green circles here and three cranial nerve five eight and the nucleus ambiguous. 5. Trigeminal nerve and its branches, the vestibular nerve, 8. Cranial nerve and the nucleus ambiguous. Cranial nerve 9. Glossopharyngeal and 10th vagus and accessory 11th. So what are the clinical features of the lateral pontine syndrome? In the cerebellum causes ipsilateral ataxia in upper and lower limb. The two tracts involved, descending sympathetic tract involved causes Horner syndrome, ipsilateral meiosis and hydrosis and and the ascending spinothalamic involvement causes contralateral loss of pain and temperature on body surface shown in the brown hair loss of pain and temperature due to damage to spinothalamic tract and in the cranial nerve involvement cranial nerve 5 trigeminal nerve involvement causes loss of pain and temperature on the ipsilateral side of the face because it's a sensory to the face so ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature on the face due to cranial nerve 5 involvement and contralateral loss of pain and temperature on the body due to spinothalamic involvement. Cranial nerve 6 abducent nerve supplies the lateral rectus muscle causes abduction of the ipsilateral eye and it is connected to the medial rectus component of the oculomotor nerve via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So it causes contraction of the medial rectus and adducts the opposite or the contralateral eye. So a lesion in the abducent 
human nucleus causes loss of horizontal case. Cranial nerve 7, facial nerve damage causes ipsilateral facial nerve paralysis, ipsilateral facial weakness, lower motor neuron type of flaccid paralysis. There is loss of taste on the anterior two-third of the tongue. What's the taste on the posterior one-third of the tongue? That is the glossopharyngeal nerve, the ninth cranial nerve. There is loss of lacrimation and salivation, loss of corneal reflex because facial forms an efferent limb. It also supplies stapedius muscles in the inner ear. So what's the effect of the stapedial paralysis? It causes hyperacusis. So what's the function of stapedius? It closes the oval window in a loud sound to protect the inner ear. Also there is drooping of the eyelid due to paralysis of the orbicularis oculi muscle and drooping of the lip due to paralysis of the orbicularis oris muscle. Cranial nerve 8, vestibulo cochlear nerve involvement causes deafness, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, nausea, vomiting, diplopia and nystagmus. Vestibulo cochlear nerve is connected to the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerve via medial longitudinal fasciculus. So a lesion in this nerve causes horizontal and vertical case palsy. So what's the presentation of Wellenberg syndrome? Pica syndrome presents with acute vertigo with cerebellar involvement causing cerebellar ataxia. First part is the brain structure that is cerebellum. Ipsilateral cerebellar ataxia from the involvement of restiform nucleus and there is dysmetria. What's dysmetria? Past pointing. Patient fails to touch the target. Examples are finger nose test and finger to finger test. And the two tracks that are involved are descending sympathetic tract. Interruption of that causes Harner syndrome. And the triad of symptoms for the Harner syndrome are ipsilateral meiosis and hydrosis and ptosis. And the second tract involved is the spinothalamic tract, which causes contralateral loss of pain and temperature on the body surface shown here here in brown color causing loss of pain and temperature on the opposite side and the cranial nerve involvement 5 8 and nucleus ambiguous involvement of the cranial nerve 5 trigeminal involvement causes loss of pain and temperature and numbness and abnormal sensation over half of the face the ipsilateral side cranial nerve 8 Vestibulocochlear nerve involvement causes dizziness, vertigo, diplopia, and nystagmus. Cranial nerve 8 is connected to the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve nuclei, the oculomotor, trochlear, and abdicinal nerve nuclei via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. We have discussed this in the other videos on lateral and the vertical gaze palsy. The nucleus ambiguous, cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, 10th, vagus, and 11th accessory. They their involvement causes dysphagia, dysphonia, dysarthria, hoarseness due to larynx, pharynx, palatal, and due to vocal cord paralysis.